Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So you're gonna have to bear with me throughout this video this morning. I just woke up, it's my first cup of coffee. Going hunting today, got everything ready to go in the Tacoma. We got the, the sled, we got the tent, we got the wood stove. I brought some my propane heater as backup. If the wind is not blowing in a favorable direction, then I might just use the propane heater because I don't want to scare off the animals while I'm camping on this property. But we'll see how it goes. I mean, you know, the, the animals on this property are pretty friendly, so I don't think they're going to scare off that easily. We'll see. Today I'm hunting a white-tailed deer. I'm sure an elk is going to, of course, present itself. So let's hope that doesn't happen. I've been debating as to whether or not I should do more videos showing hunting, fishing and stuff like that. And the problem with those videos is the whole demonetization thing. And you know, a part of me has been doing reasonably well in other aspects. I don't want to say good because compared to the amount of work I've put into this channel uh, in the past three, four years, it's only now starting to earn me a minimum wage by still working basically two jobs, basically working overtime. But it is starting to get to a point where if I get the odd video demonetized, it's not going to be the end of the world. And I just, just something that really doesn't sit well with me about the way social media is going. So it got me thinking about how, you know, they're okay with us making videos showing meat or showing, you know, how to cook meat. Cooking channels are all the rage. But how you get that meat, that is something we don't want to talk about. And I think the same holds true for every realistic dimension of things in our society in terms of what's allowed on the media is that if it's real it's rated r if it's fake phony and superficial or if it's clean cut polished whitewashed then it's not restricted so what we end up having then is a society who is so far removed from the reality of of things where their water comes from uh, even the politics how youtube is demonetizing controversial issues and that's the real like that's the reality behind this whole facade and all of the videos that they post on the trending page which are just mindless totally mindless videos no depth whatsoever because depth is restricted the reality or truth you could call it truth i mean truth in a little t sense i don't say truth as in i know the truth and i'm a truther but truth in the sense of you're not showing the reality of the situation like why is it that you can't show a field dressing video on youtube and get ads but you can show that meat being cooked up think about that for a second really think about that you can't show the actual animal being harvested processed but you can show it after it's been processed and you can show people eating it so do you see how messed up that really is? When you really think about it, you, you can sit there and watch somebody eat the flesh of an animal, but you can't watch that animal being processed. What the hell is up with that? So then you gotta ask yourself, well, what other aspects of our culture are like that? In that we can watch ourselves delight in these things, but not have to worry about the origins of these things and how these things came to be and the, the grittiness and the dirtiness. And it's very much like um, what's happening around the world with these wars in the Middle East and yada, yada, yada. You know, you only see the, the facade. You know, you don't see the, the night raids on these communities. You don't see the checkpoints. You don't see all the harsh stuff that goes on behind the scenes you just see the operation freedom logo and the freedom banner you know what i'm saying 
we don't see at Walmart when you go and you buy something, this nice plastic shiny thing, which was machined in some factory somewhere, you don't see all the blood, sweat and tears that went into that, the lives of actual people who spend their lives living in factories to make those products. You don't see that. You just see what's put right in front of you for consumption. This is one of the reasons why I keep production of the Bug Out Rolling Canada because I want to be a part of that process. And this is how we become a non-self-reliant society and this is why grid down would be chaos because we are so far removed from the reality of things because the reality of things doesn't sell the reality of things is whitewashed it's polished it's made to look perfect and pretty and not gritty pretty not gritty maybe that's what i'll call this video probably not but that would be a catchy title pretty not gritty and because everybody's so used to having everything pretty, everything synthetic, everything processed, we have no idea about the gritty. We have no idea about the organic origins of things. So what is the end result of all of this? Well, I've beat this horse to death by now, but it's full on technological dependence. It's the complete opposite of knowing where your food comes from from start to finish, raising your own animals, butchering your own animals, hunting right from the forest to the plate. A lot of people aren't gonna survive just because of the gross factor. A lot of people are not gonna be able to field dress an animal. Well, maybe when they're hungry, that's gonna change. It's hard to say. A lot of people's stomachs just won't handle it. You know, we are so far removed from our animalistic cells we are so far removed from what we've done for thousands hundreds of thousands of years in order to survive there's been a entire generations of people raised up in this incubator that without this very sophisticated breathing apparatus that we call civilization there is very little hope that we can survive off the land our our bare skin reflects that you look at any animal and you look at how vulnerable a human being is when they're naked in the forest unless they're in like a tropical environment but how the vulnerability there is so high because we've been so technologically far removed from the land and through automization we become even more so and now at the transhuman era we are ultimately wholly dependent not even dependent on the grid we are the grid that's that's what it's become we are the grid it's not just about you are a part of the grid or the grid has you you are the grid in the transhumanist era it's the pro zoomer era where you have people who are consumers of information, but also constant producers of information. And in the future, they'll just be a live 24 hour, 24 seven feed of your face for the world. And anybody who wants to log in to see what you're doing will be able to log in. There's a documentary called We Live in Public. Excellent documentary. It was an experiment that was done uh, on the uh, millennial changeover on New Year's and they had a bunch of people living in this bunker for several weeks on end and within this bunker they had cameras on you 24 7 it was called we live in public because everything you did was in public and the guy who basically put on the experiment was this eccentric uh, dot-com millionaire guy at the time I think he's broke now but he wanted to basically show that in the future there'll be no privacy that you will put all your information online and this is in 1999 remember this is before this is big google was barely getting going at this point there was no such thing as msn messenger even uh this is way before all of that so so the future is full 
immersion, full interconnectedness. You think there's a lot of cameras now, camera in your car, camera around your car, camera in your phone, camera, just wait, just wait. Soon it's the whole smart grid is going to develop some kind of mind of its own. And they're probably already working on some massive algorithm that's gonna organize all the information on you and basically make a digital blueprint of who you are based on all your habits that are understood through these various sensors that are all over the place. The main one, of course, being your smartphone. And there's no way to avoid it. Uh, this isn't a technophobe Ludite rant. This is just talking about how it's very weird how we restrict the real and we embrace the fake and what the end results of that are going to be. You can't talk about where your meat comes from, but you can sure cook it in as many different ways as you want. What is the end result of that going to be? Maybe all this concern is for naught. Maybe this is just a natural step in our evolution. Maybe we are evolving into machines. Men are evolving into machines. And we are at the infancy of the transhumanist era. Not even really there yet, because we're not even at really implantables yet. There is some implantable RFID chips, but nothing on a neurological interfacing level. How is this going to affect our psychology moving forward when you have all these psychological illnesses nowadays and drug addiction? Because everything we're told is so far removed from the real and so then when we experience the real we can't deal with it it's kind of like bullying how you know basically kids are pampered and and given all this direction and you know by the nanny state philosophy and then when they're presented with an actual bullying situation they they are helpless they don't know what to do about it even if they fight back they're probably going to get in trouble so they don't fight back and uh, they end up going passive aggressive. They either shoot up the school or they get really highly medicated. And uh, that leads to a life of addiction and flat affect and no family, um, you know, no procreation, uh, just uh, kind of hedonistic playing video games nonstop on your 60 inch tv trying to fill the void type life that's what it leads to because we are so detached from the reality of things even on your facebook news feed where you see all of the highlights the stories you know nobody is ever going to show the the backstory to all their crap i mean everybody knows that 90 percent of life is struggle and grinding and hustle sweating bleeding being tired, not wanting to do what you're doing. That's what life's all about. But what you see on Facebook and social media is, oh, everything is great. Even on these videos, you know, all you see is the final edit. You don't see all the bloopers. You don't see all the, you know, uh, the mistakes that I made, all the ums and ahs that I cut out. You don't see all that. So you get this nice, clean, package and you you your mind thinks oh this is reality wait a minute i can't achieve this i can't achieve this level of perfection so i'm gonna be depressed like when these girls see these uh fake women on the magazines you know who are cloaked in an inch thick of makeup to make themselves look be quite honest prettier than they probably are. And this is the world we're living in, man. We conceal the real. But there's a lot of people right now who want the real. They're, li they're lining up for the real. And the proof of that is in all the grungy looking furniture you can buy now, the rustic, worn look. People are paying for the worn look. I mean, they've been paying that for that since the 90s too. The whole uh, American Eagle type philosophy. That was a clothing store which sold 
clothes that looked worn because there's something about people who are longing for the used worn look. It's now trendy to go and play bushcraft. It's now trendy to want uh, furniture that looks like it's been used since antiquity. Instead of something actually functional, you choose something that's not functional because it looks more organic. It looks more real. So there is a bit of lashing out against all this. So I don't know, let me know what you guys think in the comments, man. So if I do get lucky over the next few days, maybe I'll make a video about the field dressing stuff, but I can't make any promises because you do something like that and it, it not only affects that video, but YouTube has a way of making sure you are subtly penalized when you promote anything that's that real. So when you see your current video creators struggling right now to bring you the authentic, genuine content that you perhaps came to enjoy for the longest time, and you've never supported them in any way, you've never, you know, you've always complained about the ads, you've never supported them on Patreon, you've never bought one of their merchandise or whatever to, to help support the channel, you can't really complain the way things are going because this is kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy and I'm not saying it's it's your fault necessarily, it's YouTube's fault. But uh, that's the part of the responsibility that I guess you have to bear. So you guys know how you can support the channel. Get a bug out rule, man. The bug out rules, everybody is liking the bug out rule. I haven't gotten any negative feedback except on the couple errors I've shipped out that have had some minor uh, defects within them. Just take that for what it's worth. Anyways, we also have t-shirts, the strong survive, the prepared thrive, and of course get your silky saws at canadianpreparedness.com. We will match any price that you can find from a Canadian dealer. So there you go. Thanks for watching Canadian Prepper Out.